What's one misconception about you? There are no misconceptions about me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're looking at moments involving Sean P. Diddy Combs that feel disturbing in the wake of his 2024 arrest and indictment, among other things. You know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're going to leave. Right. Got to right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this Let is sounding kind of dangerous now. Diddy parties. Over the years, numerous celebrities have praised Diddy parties, from LeBron James to Ben Stiller in the Bad Boys for Life music video. Listen, uh, if you have one of your crazy uh, house party things, shout me a holla dunk. In a 2005 VMAs ad, Derek Jeter, Nicole Richie, the Yin Yang twins, and Fat Joe reflected on their experiences at Diddy parties, portraying them as can't miss events. Given the recent descriptions of Combs' alleged freak-off parties, these celebrity testimonies come across as insensitive in retrospect. It's hard to say which is more off the hook, a Diddy party or a Diddy after party, or a Diddy after after party, which is basically a pre-party for the next Diddy party. Combs' accounts of his parties have not aged well either. In a resurfaced video, Combs films a seemingly passed out DJ named James as another guest places a drink on his head. Whether joking or not, Combs' claim that he puts white guys to sleep at his parties has taken on a more alarming meaning. For all those in London that don't know what happens to the white man when he comes to a P. Diddy party, this is what happens to the white man. Okay, what happens? Uh, it's so unfortunate. Usher sees, quote, very curious things. Usher lived with Combs for about a year during his early teens. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? In a 2016 appearance on The Howard Stern Show, Usher recounted his time in New York with Combs. Usher recalled several names like Biggie Smalls and Lil' Kim dropping by as parties raged into the early morning. I See, went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. While Usher claims he stayed up later than Combs and his crew, he wasn't sure if he could, quote, indulge in some of the activities taking place. Although Usher didn't entirely understand everything going on, Combs' lifestyle was clearly, quote, wild, quote, crazy, and, quote, curious. When asked if he would ever send his kids to, quote, puffy camp, Usher gave a firm no. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> you Hell know? no. Usher said this with a laugh, but the allegations that have come out since have piqued our curiosity. Get him to the Greek. As funny as this 2010 comedy was upon release, it's hard to rewatch without thinking about how problematic several cast members have become. It's better. It's better that you've apologized, because now we can start to rebuild. In 2023, two women, one being his ex-girlfriend, accused Jonah Hill of abusive behavior. The same year, Russell Brand's history of sexual assault accusations caught up to him. Then there's Combs, who played hot-headed record producer Sergio Roma. Oh, y'all think this meeting is for me? No, no, this meeting is not for me, it's for y'all. See, see, I'm a be all right. I'm straight. I got villas in Brazil, Tahiti, East Hampton, West Hampton. Sergio gonna be fine. While the character was likely intended as a self-aware send-up of Combs' bombastic persona, it might have hit closer to home than the filmmakers realized. In one notable scene, a whacked-out Sergio goes on a rampage, chasing Hill and Brand's characters down a hallway. Where you going? Run all the way back to LA! Nowadays, when we think of Combs running down a hallway, an infamous video involving Cassie Ventura immediately comes to mind. Quote, I'm a savage. Combs' YouTube channel posted multiple videos building hype for the 2017 documentary Can't Stop, Won't Stop. We want to hit him with that pure, uncut, 1,000% who we are. If you think that title has taken on an uncomfortable sentiment, the same can be said about the aforementioned videos. In one, Combs talks about how important winning is to him, which has likely never been more true than now. I want to win over and over and over. In another clip, Combs sits in his office, making a deal with MTV over the phone. Combs is so excited about the outcome that he starts messing up his desk, proclaiming that he's a, quote, savage who gets whatever he wants and can't be kept down. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! Taking a breather, Combs proceeds to ask what's next, although we're not sure he wants the answer. Jennifer Lopez's mom. 
After appearing in the Been Around the World music video, Jennifer Lopez dated Combs from 1999 to 2001. So handsome. In a later interview with Wendy Williams, the talk show host floated the idea of Lopez and Combs getting back together. Before Lopez could answer, she pointed to her mother, Guadalupe Rodriguez, in the audience. The horrified expression on Rodriguez's face said everything, as did a dismissive hand motion. Look at that. Look at Lopez went on to talk about how Combs sent her 100 white doves, which wasn't as romantic as he might have envisioned. Even if this gesture had won Lopez back, it's safe to say her mother would not have approved. It's crazy everybody had, like, everybody came alive. Everybody they all has, had something to say. Yeah, everybody has an opinion. Yes! It's funny to me. So, but, all right, so no puffy. Be this due to Combs's suspected infidelity during his relationship with Lopez or another reason, Rodriguez has strong parental instincts. Ashton Kutcher's Hot Ones interview. Although he has somewhat distanced himself from Combs as of late, Ashton Kutcher was once proud to call the rapper his friend. Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote, if oh, you really? have one, yeah. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. During his 2019 interview on Hot Ones, Kutcher was asked if he had any Diddy party stories to share. Kutcher had plenty, but he struggled to think of one that he could tell. I can't tell that one either. <laughs> I mean, I'm like actually cycling through them. With a smile, the actor shifted the subject away from the parties, instead talking about how he first met Combs and a memorable run the two shared. While Kutcher avoided discussing any parties, there has been speculation that he could be called to testify at Combs' trial, which would put him in a much hotter seat. In any case, Kutcher's comment that Combs, quote, can't lose, plays differently now. Well, he just can't lose. Even when he's that close to humility, that like, it becomes a driver, and so then he went out and ran the New York Marathon. The world is filled with uncomfortable lyrics. Combing through Diddy's discography, some of his music sounds almost prognostic. Yo, the sun don't shine forever, but as long as it's here, then we might as well shine together. This includes the music video for 1998's Victory, in which the artist runs away from the authorities. Of all the songs he collaborated on, 1997's The World Is Filled may be the most unnerving to revisit. Throughout his verse, Combs sings about how it's a, quote, privilege for women to be with him, although the lyrics paint a much more troubling portrait. Won't you admit it? I ain't gotta talk it cause I live it. Any chick with me, believe me, that's a privilege. The line, quote, never give up freedom feels especially ironic and creepy. This isn't just because Combs has been arrested, but considering that the charges against him include sex trafficking, there's more than one way to interpret the word freedom here. We date him like we hate him, see him like we don't need him, treat him like we meet him, and never give him freedom. Donald Trump's, quote, good friend. The year was 2012. Combs was making a cameo on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, while a future commander-in-chief was endorsing the rapper on Celebrity Apprentice 5. Working 20? for Diddy. Absolutely. I love Diddy. When Aubrey O'Day brought up Combs, Donald Trump was quick to champion him. As Trump called Combs a, quote, good friend, O'Day wasn't willing to comment on whether she thought he was a, quote, good guy. Is he a good guy? I don't want to answer that oh, question. Oh, well, I, I think he's a good guy. I'm going to stick up for him. Our perceptions of Trump and Combs have drastically changed since this episode aired. Combs has reciprocated Trump's friendship in the past, although in an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, the singer said he wouldn't want to run for president like him. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could be responsible for the whole country. Kimmel thought Combs would be a better leader than Trump, but the host might, just might be reconsidering that statement. His All That Appearance the docu-series Quiet on Set shined a spotlight on the dark side of several Nickelodeon shows, such as All That. I was so excited, but I had no idea what kind of wild ride I was getting into. In 2002, Combs appeared in the sketch comedy's now infamous Lil' Fetus episode. Combs's presence has only added to the notoriety. The episode contains a few moments that aged like milk, including young girls cheering for Combs and the singer's giant head looking through a young boy's window. Come on. <laughs> can see in your room. <laughs> hey, 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 stop screaming. <laughs> hey, it's just me, P. Diddy. In the cringiest scene, Jack DeSena and Brian Hearn try to wake up Shane Lyons. They turn to Diddy, who gives them a toy helicopter and tells him to shove it down Shane's pants. When that doesn't work, Combs hands them the remote control, and the boys turn the helicopter on, awakening Shane to a world of pain. Shall I? By all means. 
you know, for kids. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Justin Bieber's 48 Hours with Diddy In 2009, a video was posted to Justin Bieber's YouTube page featuring the teenage singer and Diddy. As soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you rock this every time you play. Yeah. Addressing the camera, Combs said Bieber would be hanging out with him for 48 hours. Combs wouldn't divulge exactly what they would be up to, but he presented it as a dream come true for a boy of Bieber's age. It seemed innocent, even cool at the time. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. 15 years later, though, we can't help but read more into the awkward word choice. For the record, Calm says, quote, buck full crazy, but it sounds like something else. The two reunited in another video where Combs mentions they haven't seen each other in a while. This prompts Bieber to give him a fake number. Okay. okay. Number? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Tell you my number. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's five, five, five. Yes. Okay. Five, 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 five. Okay. Five, five. Right. Y'all heard that? What Diddy moments do you look at differently? Let us know in the comments. Your parents ain't let you watch the Cosby Show when you was coming up. Oh, my parents would never have let me watch something like that.